Welcome back to Titan Academy. In this video, we will cover the use of tables in Titan Forms version 2.0. We will discuss how to configure a table, how to pull data from Salesforce, the various options for displaying and interacting with that data, and finally, how to execute actions based on information in the table. To add a table to a project, click on the plus sign, go to Table. You will see that you have two options, Table View and List View. The more robust of these two options is the table view, so that is what we will use for this video. Drag the table onto the canvas. The table configuration window will open. In the table configuration window, select your source. The source can either be a Salesforce object or a report. We will use an object. Let's select account. Select your number of records. You can pull up to 2,000. I'll select 200. On conditions, set any filter conditions. For example, if you want to return only records where the account type is a certain value, you would enter that here. We won't use any filters for this example, so I'll remove this. On the mapping tab, select the columns that you want to display. Let's select account name. The column is given the default label of account name. You can change that if you want. We'll leave it as is. Let's add account type and billing city. We will also add an action column. Click add an action. An action can be shown in either button or icon form. In the on click action properties is an action editor. We'll come back and add the logic for that action later. For now, we will label this delete. Click apply and then resize your table appropriately. I'll save this now. Let's go ahead and preview it. You can now see account information being pulled from Salesforce into a table. Let's take a look at the options for interacting with this data and other options for displaying this data. Select the table, gear icon, and this will bring up the settings window. In the content window, you see the edit mapping button. This will open up the Salesforce configuration window where we just were. So if you need to make any changes, once you've added the table, this is how you get back to it. In the Columns tab, you see our various columns listed. For each one, if you click on the gear, you can adjust various settings. Let's look at Account Name. In your column settings, you have the option to show or hide the column. This doesn't apply for our table here, but there are scenarios where you will need to retrieve data in the table, but not necessarily show it to the end user. If that's the case, you simply deselect this checkbox. You can include the column in a summary row, for example, a count of records. You can also allow grouping, filtering, and sorting. Let's allow for filter by account name and sort by account name. The action option we will show a bit later. In the format option, you can select various formats for the displayed data. For example, let's display all the account names in uppercase. The wrap text box is self-explanatory. Deselect this box if you do not want to wrap the text. For prefix and suffix, you can add a text or symbol prefix and suffix to the data. And for the tooltip text, this is pop-up text that shows when you hover over the column. So we've made these changes to the settings for the account name column. Let's do another one on the account type. Let's allow grouping by the account type column. Let's save this. I'll refresh the preview. And there we go. You can now see that we have a summary row showing that there are 21 records. The records are grouped by account type. The account type names are all displayed in capital letters. You can filter by account name. We can sort by account name. And there you go. Now let's take a look at setting up an action on the table. We'll go back into the table content, edit mapping. Remember that we reserved a column and labeled it delete for an action. Click the on-click action button to open up the action editor window. What we're going to do here is create a Salesforce delete action to delete the selected record from Salesforce. So I'll go ahead and add a node. I'll pick Salesforce action. We need to create a Salesforce integration to delete the record. Click on Salesforce integration. We're going to create a push delete. So I'll select push. Create new. The object in Salesforce is account. 
The action is delete. We'll leave these settings as the default. The conditions are we want to search by account ID because the record ID is what is stored as the table's value of the selected record. So we'll choose account ID. The operation is equals. And the field will be the table value. The value attribute of the table holds the record ID of the record that was returned. We don't need to set anything else here. So I'll go ahead and click apply. And now for our integration action, we first want to run that push delete. Then after that's done, we want to refresh the values in the table. So we'll call this get, which was automatically created when we created the table, to rerun the query to pull the account data from Salesforce that has been updated. I'm going to choose custom order of executions because we want to run the record delete first. We'll indicate that one to run first and then the table refresh second. We'll go ahead and insert this. I'll click apply, apply again, and save. I'll refresh the preview. I created an account to use for this. I called it account to delete. You can see it there. We've searched for it in the filter. This delete action is now active. So when I click this delete button, that action will run and it will delete the record. It then refreshes the table and the record's gone. You see there are now no more accounts that match that filter criteria. If I remove the filter criteria, there were 21 records. There are now only 20. To verify this, go into your builder, go to the gear, go to Salesforce integration logs, and you can see that the account delete action has run. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of other configuration options on your table. Select the table, select the gear, select interactivity. And here you see various interactivity options that can be set. You can hide the table on load, you can select allow selection, this will allow the user to select one or more records in a checkbox. You can restrict it to single selection, allowing only a radio button selection. Show index will show the index number of the record that was returned. Allow pagination. Here you can set a specific number of rows to be displayed per page, and the user can page back and forth using these two little chevrons. You can freeze the header. You can allow a global search. You can also here set grouping, filtering, and sorting, which we've done on the columns already. And that is how it's done.